What's up, guys? Little Wolf from XS here. Part three of my encounters with special forces. This one is not as crazy as the last one, the Aussie beating up the airmen. But I still find it interesting. The first time I ever met Pararescue was in um, Aladid, Qatar. That's where uh, AFSOC is, Air Force Special Operations Command. They, they're there or whatever. But um, the first time I ever met them was we didn't have any hangars to work on our aircraft at the time because they were building hangars. So there were th certain jobs that we could only do while in an aircraft hangar. So our people would have to contact AFSOC and request to use their hangar. Because if you know anything about special forces, they're, they're, like a, they're under a different budget almost. Like whereas we might not get a bunch of money or enough money to do our job, even though we still do it. That's what's great about the Air Force, but we still get it done. Uh, special ops, spec ops or whatever, they tend to get money a little quicker because, I mean, their mission is a little more essential. Uh, not by much, but just a little bit more. So we would use their hangar, and in using their hangar, they had a gym in the hangar. They trained in the hangar. All kind of stuff. They had uh, two hangers, actually. They trained in the hangar. They worked out in the hangar. So you would see them all the time. Uh, some You would see some with facial hair and kind of long hair, and you would see some without it. I guess it just depended on what the guy wanted to do, um, like if he wanted facial hair or not. There's a lot of people that don't like having face. I don't like having facial hair. I can't stand it. It annoys me. Maybe a little scruff, but I've grown a beard before, and it was the most annoying time of my life. So I guess some of the guys didn't want beards. But um, they would be working out. Like while we were working on the aircraft, they would be working out there all the time. Um, I'm not going to give like any specifics. Not that I would get in trouble. I don't. I mean, maybe I would. I'll probably get killed tomorrow. You, you probably won't hear from me anymore. But uh, they would, they would fly on these kind of unmarked civilian type planes I have no clue what they were doing where they were going why they were doing it and I didn't ask them the funny thing is I guarantee if we asked them they probably would have told us they even let us uh, come look at their planes the civilian type planes they had the only thing like they said we don't care if you take pictures just don't take pictures of the inside of the aircraft and I understand why like even on our aircraft there's certain times where we can't take pictures of the cockpit and it's because they have a lot of their courses charted and information up there so we kind of know we don't take pictures like after the mission's over then all that stuff's useless and they don't they don't care if you post a picture of it or whatever but the uh the pj like we walked into the hangar and the there was a pj in there a pair rescue man and he was like what's up guys y'all want to check out the plane or whatever and we were like yeah sure so we went and looked at their plane and i mean they're just civilian looking aircraft like prop jobs uh, so he showed us around the hangar. Uh, we even went back to like their area where they hang out. The funny thing is this hangar was really nice, but when you went back to where they hang out and all that, like their break room, it was like all like unfinished plywood and stuff like that. Like they built it themselves. They had like, uh, you know, American flags and all kind of different stuff like stapled to the wall. Uh, they had funny stickers everywhere. It was like, they they get away with a lot more than we do, but it was almost like the guy, the the guy in charge or whatever over them was like, y'all just do whatever you want to this place, and so they started building, you know, little rooms and offices and stuff out of just stuff they found around. If you've been to Aladid, there's just stuff laying around everywhere. Like I built when I was there, I built a smoke pit because we didn't have a designated smoke pit at the time in 2014, so I built my own smoke pit. Like with nails, I found a hammer. And we like nailed this plywood together and made a smoke pit. Because for some reason in the Air Force, in order to have a smoke spit pit, it has to be a structure. So we just built a structure out of all this lumber and stuff we found laying around. Uh, it was kind of funny. There was like, there, there's abandoned buildings out there that they don't use anymore. Abandoned trailers. We went through a bunch of the trailers and got stuff out of them. There was like hospital trailers that still had all the hospital equipment in it, but they were abandoned, covered in like dust. It was crazy. But, uh, so that's what these pararescue guys did. They built their own area inside the hangar, uh, their own private area. But 
Like seriously, the guy did not care. He was like, "Y'all can take pictures and stuff. Just don't take, don't go in the cockpit and take any pictures." And we looked at it, and it was like nothing special. I guess all their equipment that they load on the plane was off in the back, but they would go. We could never figure out what they were doing because they would fly out in civilian attire, and then when they came back, they would be in in their military uniform. So we have no clue. I think a lot of it was just training missions because it uh, 2014 was the uh, I can't remember 2012 was the troop surge or no 2012 I think was the troop drawdown in Iraq when I was there, which was a pretty crazy time. And then 2014 I believe was Obama's troop surge into Afghanistan. So I mean they could have been going to Afghanistan. Uh, I got some of my flags flown while I was there and. Uh, or I got one of my flags flown, and it flew in Afghanistan on a, on a spy plane. So that was kind of cool. I have the certificate downstairs, and my uh, I gave the flag to my mom and dad. But uh, you could get flags flown anywhere. People were getting them flown over Syria. I have my grandfather's flag flew on a a, a B one uh, over. I think it was Afghanistan. I have the plaque downstairs, but. Uh, Pretty cool, and it was cool meeting the pararescue guys, and they were pretty laid back. They didn't care. Now, there was one guy, it was a colonel, that came in one day and started yelling at me because he said, hey, man, uh, you need to clean up all this stuff when y'all are done because y'all keep leaving this place, and it's filthy. And I'm like, it wasn't me. You know, I didn't say nothing, so I was like, yes, sir, we'll clean it up. We always cleaned up the hangar when we left, but other people, other shops used the hangar, and I guess they just left stuff laying around. But it was funny when the, I guess he was, over the pararescue? I don't know. He just come out of the back and was like, hey, you, staff sergeant, you need to clean this place up when you leave. And I was just like, yes, sir, you know, get out of here. But, uh, yeah, so that was my first time. I told you not as exciting as the Aussie kicking the airman's head off, but uh, that was the first time I ever met pararescue, and they were, they were pretty cool. They were pretty laid-back guys. I even went and told them one time because there was this dude acting strange outside of the hangar. And he wasn't, he wasn't an American or anything. So I went back and told the pararescue guys, I was like, hey, there's a guy acting really strange outside the hangar. And they're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> they just didn't care. I was like, all right, whatever. You don't care, I don't care. So we left. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed that. I've got um, part four and five. Because I've, I've only met Special Forces about five times on my trips. But uh, I'm sure I've met them before and just didn't realize it, you know. Uh, sometimes they just look like normal people. But anyways, guys, appreciate y'all watching. Check me out SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter, and like always, check me out the streets.